Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to take a look at the clock speed of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Oftentimes, uh, you don't even give the clock speed a thought. It is what it is, and you're happy with it. Uh, but let's say you've got a program routine that's just taking a bit too long, and you want it to run a little bit faster. This is an easy way to accomplish that. To help us understand this, I've got a demo program here I'd like to go over with you. Uh, most of it's truly irrelevant uh, to setting the clock speed, but it gives us a tool to measure the effects of setting the clock, spe clock speed. Uh, we're going to import a couple of libraries. Uh, we're going to get set up for an LED uh, that we can turn on and off on the board. This is the routine that's going to give us something to measure. It's 100,000 very basic math calculations. So we'll go through, do that 100,000 times, and then it'll measure, roughly measure, the amount of time by using this uh, routine here and down here. We'll look at the clock ticks uh, of the system and then uh, record that in STET, and then of course the difference is the runtime of that routine. Now that's approximate, it's not absolutely precise. There's other routines for that, but for our example here, it's quick, down, dirty, and easy. Uh, to run this routine then, or our program is uh, going to run our routine following these few lines of code, we're going to turn on the LED that's on board on the Pico, uh, we're going to uh, set a variable uh, to t that is coming from the do stuff routine, which is returning to us the difference between end time and start time. Then we'll print that result out, and that's the end of the program. So we'll plug in the Pico, and we'll give that a second to come alive here. And I'm going to click stop. It seems to be ready. So we'll go ahead and run this. And it took 1,457 milliseconds to run 100,000 of these sets of calculations. Now, wow, that might be, that's a, almost a minute and a half. And for your project, that might be just a bit too long for you to also perform some other work with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So, that's where the clock speed comes in. We're allowed to overclock or technically even underclock, the Raspberry Pi Pico, and they give us utilities or facilities and functions to do that with. So let's take a look at the next program. Uh, pretty much a very similar calculation routine here. Uh, we're importing uh, the same libraries. Uh, we're going to come down to here. I'm going to set up a loop to call that... Uh, do stuff routine, and that loop will just repeat two times. And each time through this main loop down here, we are going to set our clock speed starting out at 125 megahertz, the standard frequency of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Then we'll bump it up to 140 megahertz, run the same calculations, 200 megahertz, and then finally 250 megahertz to do the same calculations. So we'll go through and run this now and see what the effect is of changing the Raspberry Pi Pico's clock speed. Give it a run. It's running through this whole routine twice. And here we are. At 125 megahertz, we got the same result as we did earlier when we just ran the singular test, uh, almost a second and a half at 1,457 milliseconds. By changing the clock speed, increasing it to 140 megahertz, I got 1,300 milliseconds. My, my time went down. At 2 million or 2 megahertz, the uh, time to process all that took 911 milliseconds. And then finally, at 250 megahertz, we've got our processing time down to 729 milliseconds. So roughly speaking, it's twice as much processing 
uh, in that same amount of time. And that might get your project over the edge from being slow and sluggish to absolutely fantastic. So take a look at the machine.freak function, and uh, you'll want to play with it a little bit. I would recommend staying within that range of about 125 megahertz up to 250 megahertz. That's been working reliably for me on about a half a dozen or so different Picos that I've tested here. Uh, some people can get more. Some people can also lower the clock speeds down a bit. Uh, but nonetheless, it's certainly worth a try to get a little more performance out of your Raspberry Pi Pico. Simple to do, simple to try. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Dayhut for Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. If you enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would take the time to uh, like the video and subscribe. That helps us ensure future existence of this channel and the development of future videos.